G'day ice cream lovers, Gilbert here, self-appointed headmaster of Scoob School. Great to have you along in this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, you guessed it, Whiteboard Wednesday, Whiteboard Wednesday, Whiteboard Wednesday. It's cool when it's hot. Anyway, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday here at Scoob School. We look at all of the comments in the, uh, well, the comments on these videos, and uh, there's a lot of comments saying thank you. The Adventures of Gerald and Rhea, big fans of the channel, reached out and said, hey, we need to thank Steve. Well, listen, don't thank me. Thank our episode sponsor and all of our sponsors, which allow us to be able to keep creating this content. You can find them on our website at uh, scoopschool.com. But this particular episode of Whiteboard Wednesday is sponsored by Dippin' Flavors. Love Dippin' Flavors right here in town in St. Louis. The link is down below. Ingredients for ice cream, hot fudge toppings, a lot of different recipes. Uh, you'll want to talk to Ryan there. He's the main guy. You tell him that I said hello and thank him for his episode sponsorship and all of our sponsors, by the way. Let's get into Whiteboard Wednesday. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk today in this episode about milk solids non fat. Get a lot of questions about the whole milk solids non-fat thing both in its milk application but also in the ice cream mix application. So let's take off our whiteboard Wednesday here. Milk solids non-fat or MSNF. 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 We've got basically let's start with the milk which is basically the building block for your ice cream products whether it be soft serve, gelato, premium ice cream, custard. We start with our milk. It's the building block. Now, milk, when it comes out of the cow, is 88% water, would you believe it? So what you're drinking, for the most part in a gallon of milk, is 88% water. The rest of it is solids. And that last 12% over here of solids is broken up into about 4% fat or milk fat. So when you're looking at a uh, full cream vitamin D milk, it's about 4% fat, give or take, it might be 3.8, 4.1, but it's around about that 4% fat, which leaves you over here with 8% solids or non-fat solids or milk solids non-fat. So let's talk a little bit about that 8% because this is primarily where a lot of flavor comes from in the milk. Uh, it's where a lot of bulking agent comes from in the milk and in your ice cream mix. So let's break this up into um, the two different sections. So on this side, you've got about 4% of protein. Uh, that might be spelt wrong. 4% protein, generally that's casein protein, about 3% and about 1% of whey protein. So you've got casein and whey protein on this side, and over here you're left with um, about 5% or let's say 4% if we want to make the numbers work. And that's basically a combination of lactose, which is about 4%, and about 1% or so of ash. It's a little bit less than 1% actually. That ash is a little bit less than 1%. Sometimes it's like 0.7% of the entire milk uh, makeup, but it actually determines how the milk tastes. So a very small percentage of this breakdown of milk basically um, you know, affects the way that the milk tastes. It's almost like a filter, if you will, in the cow. So again, just a quick overview, 88% water, 12% solids, which is a balance between your milk fat and your milk solids non-fat. About 4% fat in milk leaves about 8% in milk solids non-fat. Out of that 8%, you've got about four, let's say three and a half of casein protein and whey protein. And the other four or five, four and a half is 4% uh, lactose, which is the cow's natural sugar. We just did a video on that lo long ago about uh, um, sugar-free products aren't really sugar-free uh, because lactose is sugar and then 1% ash. That's how milk is broken down. So let's talk a little bit about how an ice cream recipe works because you really do need to balance out the process of milk fat and milk solids non-fat. Let's clear the board. One, two, three. Shing! Oi! 
<laughs> Look at that, it's just like magic. So let's talk, uh, let's take a frozen custard mix. Frozen custard mix. This is a mix, that doesn't look right. Hey, let's fix that up. Shing. Gee, it's like magic. You've gotta be careful not to abuse the shing though. You gotta respect the shing. Frozen custard mix, what is that made up of? Well, most frozen custard mix are made up of 10% fat. The FDA, Food and Drug Administration says, as a standard of identity, frozen custard must have at least 10% fat. And then, most ice cream and frozen custard mixes also need to have around about that 10% milk solids non-fat. And this is where you see this terminology a lot more when you're talking about ice cream formulation, mix formulation, it's gotta be balanced up. And part of the reason why it needs to be balanced up is because the FDA says it must. And in a general rule, when your butter fat goes up, which gives you a little bit more solids, dairy solids, your milk solids non-fat can go down a little bit. Again, each recipe or each element of the frozen dessert business is regulated by those standards of identity, so you need to check on them as you go. But as you go up in fat, you can go down a little bit in solids. Now, if you jump back to what we were saying before, where do those solids come from? Uh, well, there's casein protein, uh, there's skim milk powder, which gives you a bulking agent and provides uh, solids but not fat. Uh, you've also got whey in here as well. So there are a lot of different things that mix manufacturers use in order to make up that 10% milk solids non-fat that again it's not there because they are trying to bulk up the uh, recipe it's there because the government says it should be there and provide a good balance between your milk solids and your milk solids non-fat. We could go into a whole bunch of recipes but basically it's the same thing. The idea is that you need to understand that that milk solids non-fat is attainable by some of these other proteins and products that are already in the cow's milk, but only in very small quantities. Mix companies actually do a great job in being able to separate all of those out so they can use larger amounts of the casein and other proteins, skim milk powder and whey, in order to get your 10% milk solids non-fat. Hope that helps. Look, if you're buying mix from a company, you may see that on a label, you may see that on your documentation, you may not know what it was. That's what it is. If you're making your own mix, again, in order to comply with maybe some county, state, federal regulations, you need to have a good understanding of milk solids non-fat, how you can put them in and how they affect the total uh, mix base prior to pasteurization and after pasteurization. Look, I hope that helps. MSNF, MSNF, respect the MSNF. We do wanna thank our episode sponsor, Dip and Flavors again. You can talk to them about MSNF. And if you have any other questions, we're just about to film a whole bunch of videos based on questions from our viewers. We'd love to have you pose them to us. Down in the comments there, write it in. It doesn't need to be about milk solids, non-fat. It can be about anything. We'll extract it out. We'll put it on the screen and we'll answer it for you. Thank you to our episode sponsor, Dippin' Flavors. Keep on scooping. See you in the next video.